Cobain Montage of Heck is a 2015 release documentary directed by Brett Morgan. Yes, as you can probably tell from the title, it focuses on Kurt Cobain, obviously of Nirvana fame. Yeah, it charts his life well from when he was born, uh, his time in Aberdeen, Washington, and then his move to, to Seattle, the forming of Nirvana, and their rise to, to fame. And then, unfortunately, his, his demise. His demise, um, yeah. But it, it mainly focuses on you know him growing up and the problems he had at at home, you know, his, his family splitting up, and then his and his relationship with Courtney Love. It kind of ends with with his death. Doesn't really just, just before. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't go into detail on that. Um, but yeah, it's. I mean, I guess it's kind of the definitive documentary on him. It's not, you know, it's not a Nirvana documentary. It is it is on Kurt Cobain, although obviously, uh, well, Dave Grohl doesn't make an appearance, but Chris Novoselic does. And um, who is the bass player? Yes. In case you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's I don't know it's kind of heartbreaking a little bit, isn't it? When you see him as a little kid, it is. And, yeah, uh, it's the first time I'd seen it. It came out a couple of years ago. I'd never seen it before, and you first. No, time I you hadn't saw seen it. it. Well. No, I wanted to, but I hadn't, hadn't got around to it. So yeah, I mean, that, so that's what it is. It's a, it's, it's it looks at his life. Uh, obviously, Nirvana come into it quite a lot because that's who he was with. Um, and but it's you know, it's it's focused on him, and I think it's done really well. Mm. I really enjoyed it. Actually, I thought it was um, it put together really well. Um, I think you know they they have they have a lot of fun with the kind of I suppose the aesthetics of it, and yeah. they play you know there's lots of animations and and home footage. Uh, so there's lots. So you kind of yeah. So you start off with him. Well, you start off with his parents talking about you know marrying and. And then wanting to have a child, and of course they have Kurt, and uh, then you see lots of amazing how much home footage there is actually. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, it's always uh, true. <laughs> when these, these celebrities, you, they always seem to have video cameras when they're kids. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, you know, back in those days, you would have had what a sixteen millimeter camera mm. or something. I think quite a lot of people would have had them. So you get a lot of footage of Kurt as a child, and then of course they talk about how he was quite hyperactive. They, they, you know, they took him to the doctors because yeah. he was so fidgety and, and just bouncing off the walls basically and straight away they just give him uh, Ritalin <laughs> exactly yeah which makes him even more insane. of course yeah <laughs> of course you well, do this was the was a 60s 70s it would have, he was born 67, 67 so yeah, yeah so that would have been 70s. the 70s yeah so yeah that was just like yep uh, it, of course yeah, exactly yeah and then of course then so then you go into yeah you go into a family breakdown a family breaks apart and he's kind of moved around from Mother to father to grandparents to uncle and aunt and all this kind of stuff. He lives with a teacher for a while. Lives with a teacher for a while. Yeah, and then and then obviously they splice in lots of, um, yeah, lots of lots of animation. So of course you're getting so basically so Brett Morgan wrote and directed this, and he was given <laughs> complete access by both Courtney Love and Kurt Cobain's family, um, to the to his archive, and so that's obviously lyrics diaries and photographs and film and, and all kinds of things mm. and I think the director's really put together a really interesting you know because there's so much mm. of his life in there and I think it works really well um, so they he's got he did lots of recordings as he was growing up um, and he would make uh, either you know mixtapes for his friends or he did a lot of, you know, he was mess. I'm not a musician, so I don't know what exactly, but like a, like a four track uh, sampler or something, and then, you know, he messes around with that, and he's like creating different sounds and weird things, and so obviously they've then animated that, um, and so you hear his voice, and you hear obviously things that he's doing, and I really enjoyed that part of it, mm. and then of course you get lots of animations of like, you know, writings in diaries, yeah, and yeah. you see all things, kind of. I suppose you're seeing what was going on inside his head, you know. I mean, Kurt Cobain was. A lot of people probably don't agree, but I think he was a, a genius. You know, he he knew he had this crazy, very creative mind, and you know, just just kind of spat things out of his head constantly. <laughs> um, and that's usually you know what a great front man has. And so I think this what this film is doing is showing his kind of mind yeah, in, yeah. in action in some ways. And there's some interviews like you said Chris Novoselic is uh, interviewed in the in the documentary yep. but Dave Grohl is not there no I think he was well first of all he was busy because he did a TV show uh, I was out a couple of years ago I can't remember what it was called now but it was it was a sort of around the making of of his out of one of the Foo Fighters albums and he was going to different cities and talking about the sound you know the music of those cities 
anyway, that's why he wasn't in it. But I think he also said that, you know, I kind of said everything that I have to say about, you know, Kerr and Nirvana, and I wouldn't really be able to add anything that I haven't already said. So he kind of thought there wasn't much point in being in it. Of course, he didn't want to be in it, but he was busy and didn't really have anything to add. No, and then so. I can add to that. So I was reading an interview with the director, Brett Morgan, and he was saying, um, that I think, yeah, he spoke to, he spoke to Dave Grohl, but... They just, he decided, you know, he wasn't making a documentary about Nirvana. No. And he had one voice for Nirvana mm. and he didn't need anything else. No. And I think I think it works fine. I mean, it's yeah. not a documentary about Nirvana. Obviously, Nirvana are featured, you know, quite heavily in the middle of it. And then it kind of goes off into, so the kind of the last section really is when he meets Courtney. Uh, so you do see, a, you see another girlfriend of his um, from kind of before Nirvana broke and then as Nirvana broke. And then that that relationship broke down, and then he meets Courtney Love. He met Courtney Love in in, in Wales, actually. Mm. I mean, I think that you know the film I mean, tread carefully here, but because uh, there's lots of you know myths and things out there about the relationship between Court and Courtney. I cut Court and Courtney. Court and Courtney. <laughs> we're, we're fans of this music. We yeah. don't really know about their personal lives. Uh, I don't wanna, don't want to really go into that. But um, but you know this film has obviously had her permission to to make this I film. I think she actually and, approached him to to make right, it. Right. Okay, so. fair enough. Um so, you know, I I, I personally found the stuff in in it's either a hotel room or, or an apartment somewhere. I found that all quite depressing because obviously, you know, there's a lot of there's a, they're on drugs or Kurt's clearly on drugs at some at some stage mm. in it. And I found that whole it's a bit downtrodden all that and a bit kind of, you know, just made me feel a bit ugh. What, what drugs do to people yeah, and, and yeah. stuff, you know, it's all a bit messy. And then, of course, their, their daughter, Frances Bean, and she's in there as well. And, and obviously there was a little bit of problem around that time because of, of the whole drug addiction too, and that, that's obviously shown. But I think that, I mean, that's what makes this documentary quite good because they don't, they don't leave anything out, you know. No, I mean, no. apart from, obviously, it ends just before he dies and there's a, there's a caption at the end of the film, don't worry, that's not a spoiler. If it is, well, where have we been for the last 25 years? So he has this uh, overdose in Rome. Mm. Um, it's kind of the beginning of 94. And then he goes back to America to, I suppose, recuperate. And, and that's when he took his life. Yeah, So, uh, but I think it's good because it doesn't hold anything back. And it does. It's not, it's not trying to take sides. It's not, no. it's not doing any of that. So there is another documentary um, that... I've seen a long, long time ago. Mm. I didn't watch it again recently, but you watched it the other day. Yeah, yeah, and just to compare. Yeah. Just to kind of compare the two, and that's Kurt and Courtney, and you want to say a little bit yeah, about Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's directed by Nick Broomfield. It was, I think it came out in 98, so it was only you know, not long after he died. Um, and obviously, I mean, in, in Montage of Heck, you speak, you, you, you see both his parents. They're not in Kurt and Courtney at all. I mean, the only relative I think you see is his aunt, you know, who, who, you know, she comes across really well and nice and, you know, she seems, you know, very honest and genuinely misses him. And his, the girlfriend that you mentioned earlier, she, she plays quite a big role in Kurt and Courtney. And again, you feel sympathy for her because, you know, she obviously, they cared for each other and she misses him. And, you know, she, she, so, you know, she was obviously sad about their relationship breaking down and especially, you know, the fact that he's, you know, he's no longer with us. It, I think the, the, the way... Nick Broomfield makes his documentaries kind of the story takes him somewhere he doesn't really he has an idea but then interviews kind of change the course of where the documentary goes and it kind of turns into a conspiracy fest <clears throat> for for a large yeah. portion of the runtime and it talks to the private investigator that Courtney hired after he died and he thinks you know that, that Courtney Love had something to do with his death and all this other stuff and the, and the guy uh, what's his name El Duce uh, some you know a singer from a punk band who um, who reckons Courtney offered him fifty thousand dollars to kill Kurt, uh, and also says that he knows who actually did, and then a couple of days after being interviewed, was hit by a train. Yeah, so, <laughs> it was all very strange. And there's other other various people that obviously were like sort of in the periphery of, of their lives, but you don't get the sense they really knew them that well. So they're kind of just giving their opinion on things they don't maybe know a great deal about. But it's kind of all that Nick Broomfield has access to because the whole time Courtney Love's trying to shut it down yeah. um, and doesn't want to give access, won't, won't let him use the music, doesn't want to be interviewed. You know, She doesn't come off particularly well from it, but then neither does he either. So I don't know, it's... It's a bit of a strange one, and it kind of doesn't really tell you a great deal about either of them. No, I just seem to remember, I've seen it a couple of times, um, Scott, I like the soundtrack. 
It's, yeah, it's got, yeah. I mean, it's got other Seattle bands on it. That it's got Earth but, on there, yeah. an amazing band. And of course, Dylan Carlson from Earth uh, features in the documentary. He's, he's like Kurt's friend. You slip into the whole conspiracy theory element, and you know, I, I can't. For, you know, I, I, prob- I personally believe he, you know, Kurt Cobain was suffering immensely. I mean, if you, if you, so if you go back to the montage of Heck, I mean, it, it does show up. So there's actually, there's an interesting, inter- uh, there was a review, so Buzz Osborne from the band The Melvins, he wrote a review of the film, and he said that 90% of Montage of Heck is, is all lies and it's all fake. Um, but then if you watch Montage of Heck, you kind of get the understanding, as I said before, that Kurt Cobain, you know, he's rattling off all this crazy stuff that's going on in his head. Was he, me- was he right? You know, there's a couple of stories in there that, that, that Buzz Osborne mentions um, that, that take place in the documentary, one being... Uh, him nearly killing himself on a railway track when he was younger, and another one, mm, slightly uh, dodgy experience with a young lady. Won't go into that. Um, but you know, is is that true? Is it not true? Is you know, I mean, Kurt Cobain was a writer. He was mm-hmm. a he was a he was a, a, a lyricist. You know, and he was he had this crazy head. Um, so I'm sure you know he either embellished things or you know make, he was making up stories all the time. And uh, and you do get if you watch his interviews, you get the sense that he's he's playing around. You know, mm-hmm. he didn't like journalists. Uh, who likes journalists? No, none of these creative <laughs> people like journalists. They're all out for you know whatever. Um, and I think probably what happened to Kurt, he was you know he couldn't take the fame, and then it something gets you, and and he took his life. And I think that's probably what happened with Kurt Cobain. I don't think there's anything sinister going on. Everyone likes a good conspiracy theory at the end of the day. You know, everyone likes to, because you never know and when it's someone that you, you know, you really latch on to. And obviously Kurt Cobain was someone that so mm. many people latched on to. Uh, the last thing they want to know is that their hero has, has taken their own life, you know. And what's nice about Montage of Heck is it doesn't, it doesn't go there. No, no, it's, it's it about him and yeah. his life and, yeah, the ups and downs of it and, and, and what made him the person that he was. Uh, you know, and you kind of, it kind of gives you an insight into to how he wound up you know, doing what he did because, you know, he obviously he didn't have a great childhood. No, and um not. and when he grew up, you know, obviously the drugs didn't help and um it was also they also talk about how he, he really he couldn't take ridicule. He hated being ridiculed. Yeah, that was yeah. And um any sort of criticism, you know, negative criticism is yeah, he didn't you couldn't really take it. And I think obviously being in the public eye you're gonna get that, regardless of whether you're the greatest or whatever you do, there's always gonna be somebody that that is going to, you know, disagree with that and say, you're no, you know, you are no good. It's the tragedy of, of, of I think, having a creative mm. head. You know, a lot, for a lot of creative people, they cannot take criticism. No. Ultimately, uh, he just wanted to play music. He wasn't interested in being famous and having loads of money. He just no, wanted to play music. He just wanted to play some tunes, yeah. good tunes. So this has been going on for ages. We should probably <laughs> stop talking and uh, get out the film. So mm. we have it. I have it. I have it on DVD. Um... Uh, it's not mine. No. I, okay. I borrowed it off someone. It's it's not, apart from the documentary itself, it's got, uh, there's an interview with Don Cobain and his father and uh, an interview with the director as well. Uh, it's got a nice, nice slipcase as well. You have it on Blu-ray, don't you? I did you get bought it on Blu-ray. Yep. Yours, oh, yours has got a slipcase as well. It That's has, yes. how funky Matching is that? Matching set. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. I mean, I think uh, there's a US release as well, obviously, um, and that does have a few more interviews in it, um, you know, a lot of sort of extra that weren't in the film. So uh, it's not a more complete package. And that, but, I mean, you're only talking, I don't know, 20 minutes extra. So right. it's up to you. I think there was like a big deluxe edition as well, but I'm not sure what that had in it. I know the, the, there was a soundtrack released as well and a book to go along with it as well. Yeah, so I would, um, I'd recommend it. I think, you know, I really enjoyed it. I think it's, um, I think my only criticism was it was a little bit long. I was going to say the same thing, yeah, it's a little bit, I mean, it's it's like two and a quarter hours. Two and a quarter hours, and it's kind of, because it's all just footage, um, it's great to watch that footage. Uh, It's just, it just felt, I think by the time you got to Kurt and Courtney, Mm. it just started to, it was just a bit too much of that. It just started to drag a little bit. And, uh, you know, it's just caught in love I mean, naked, basically, in the shower, isn't it? Uh, yeah. At yes. the end of the day. Um, I mean, that was a bit... So obviously, she's, she's given him all the footage. I was like, so that's what you want? You wanted to I don't, I give him naked footage of yourself? Well, Courtney Love is Courtney Love. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess. Day. Courtney Love is... Um, yes. <clears throat> you know, whatever you think of Courtney Love, I always believe that she 
you know, she's a very intelligent person. Mm. She knows exactly what she oh, wants. Oh, yeah, no, like. absolutely, yeah. And she's totally... I mean, have you ever seen, like, a whole a mm. band live? You know, she's very... Um, extra, what's the word? Extra, she's an extreme extrovert. Mm. And, uh, you know, very out there. She auditioned for Faith No More as well. She did, Back in true. the 80s, too. You know, and she was in the Sid and Nancy film in, in the mid-80s. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she, after you know, after Kurt died, she did have a little bit of a movie career. Well, she still, I think she still does still does a thing, bit. But I, think, I mean, she yeah. was in People vs. Larry Flynn, right, uh, yeah. Man on the Moon. Yeah. So um, you know, and she she was she was okay in them. So yeah, we recommend giving this a one, yeah. giving this one a go because it's uh, it's really good. I, I mean, personally, I would probably do a double bill with with Kurt and Courtney. Just you know, I think that's a bit of a curio and it shows you sort of another side of it. And while you have to take most of it with a pinch of salt, it does fill in some of the gaps in that. Um, I would say that, that kind of shows it from a different side, and also obviously has interviews with people that aren't aren't featured in in yeah, montage yeah. effect. So okay, uh, do a triple bill, watch hype as well. Ex <laughs> definitely watch hype, yeah, if, because then then you can learn about the actual music mm. side of this and, and that whole scene. Yeah, definitely watch hype. So that was Cobain Montage of Heck, and always, if you enjoyed the video, let us know in the comments below. Yep, hit the subscribe button up there if you've enjoyed our video, and there's some other ones to check out over there. Come and find us on Twitter and Facebook and join us in a week for another one.